What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the real life battles that would be fought by my personal favorite dinosaur. You already know, it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So look, over the last few years, there has been a lot of nerfing to the King of the Dinosaurs and what I can only assume to be a cheap way to generate interest in people seeing new types of carnivores. A lot of people believe this started all the way back in 2001 with Jurassic Park 3 and the Spinosaurus, but a year earlier, Dino Crisis 2 made the Rex lose to a Giga. So this has actually been a cliche for even longer than what's in the Jurassic World series. Now, while a lot of people like to write T-Rex into a corner today and make it a pushover, make no mistake, in the real world, this thing was an absolute unit. And this is well documented to be one of the most overpowered dinosaurs of all time. It's the Superman of the Cretaceous, and it would annihilate most things that came into contact with it. But with that being said, there is still some competition. These are the real animals that would have actually stood a chance at killing it. I believe Vader thinks there's nobody that can Here he comes! Oh my goodness! I'm Man, I'm just happy to do this video right now. I've wanted to talk about stuff like this for a while. So for starters, we need to take a look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex's environment. The animals in this video are creatures that would have legitimately lived alongside T-Rex back in the Cretaceous period. So there's not gonna be a Giganotosaurus or a Spino on the list, nothing like that. This is gonna be grounded and real world. Speaking of which, starting off with what I think is a really interesting enemy, we've got to talk about the Ankylosaurus. A heavily armored herbivore with an impressive club at the end of its tail that could be used to deal a terrible blow to anything that wanted to kill it. Now, interestingly, we have some information that would suggest that the Ankylosaurus club was actually being used against other members of its own species, with a particular individual even being damaged by what paleontologists assume to be a bout of social dominance. But the club tail would most certainly come handy if it would ever strike at the legs of a tyrannosaur in defense. The funny thing is, we still don't have any evidence that the Clubdale ever factually hit a Tyrannosaurus like at all. No bones of the carnivores that have been damaged were ever directly found to be from an Anki attack. Meanwhile, T-Rex was seriously no pushover. With what I'm sure most of you already know, Tyrannosaurus Rex had the most devastating bite force of anything on land during its reign. And I really don't think that the body of an Ankylosaurus would stand much of a chance from a well-placed bite at the right time to say the least. It could have killed one with a very specific blow, like what we saw go down in Walking with Dinosaurs, but look, the animal just keeps getting bigger and bigger from new discoveries being made. I did a video a year ago talking about the information that it could be 70% bigger than we previously thought, and I haven't even done this yet. We've got new information that suggests it might have been even bigger than, like, it just keeps getting bigger. It's nuts, man. From what we can tell, there was literally nothing able to stand in its way during the Cretaceous, except for the possibility of one particular dinosaur that may have been a little too big to pick on, even for T-Rex. This animal is actually proudly on display in the visitor center of the first Jurassic Park movie, the massive sauropod dinosaur known as Alamosaurus. That animal is seen locked in mortal combat with the T-Rex in the first film, and these bones are actually the same that the Velociraptor pounces on at the end of the movie, causing the diorama to fall apart. Now, Alamosaurus was huge. Ironically, this thing could get bigger than the Brachiosaurus in some instances. It was very, very big. And while you would think that this would keep it safe. Are you sure about that? So get this, Jurassic Park may actually not be that far off from reality, even with this diorama display, because we've actually found bones with bite marks from the T-Rex in Alamosaurus remains from that time during the Cretaceous. And while I'm sure that in some instances a Rex would have scavenged a dead animal that it wandered across, we've also found bones of the animal that actually had begun to heal. Fighting in the head of Steve. Oh! But Alamosaurus would have a cool little defense mechanism against threats with bony scoots adorning its back. Perfect for warding off any sort of set of big angry jaws that may start latching onto your person. And with that whip-like tail, it would be safe as long as it stayed being big and massive and away from a T-Rex. And while it's obvious that smaller animals that weren't fully grown would have been attacked by the king of the dinosaurs any day of the week, I still think that the Alamosaurus has that armored plating of scoots 
for a good reason. You'll notice that a lot of animals, by the way, that live during the time of T-Rex have some sort of special protection on the outside of their bodies. And I wouldn't be surprised if the animals evolved this way to try and stand a chance against a Rex while they were roaming the land. And if the theory that T-Rex hunted in packs of family groups is even remotely true, well, you can forget about it being a clear-cut victory in every situation for the Alamosaurus. I mean, if there's like two or three T-Rexes nipping at your legs, you rear up and maybe crush one of them skulls and uh, get a little too close to that <laughs> set of jaws. I'm telling you, man, Tyrannosaurus has been way too nerfed in movies. We've got the evidence in the fossil record. No, you're not gonna convince me otherwise. Now look, next up is a set of animals that I think would have been a pretty gnarly battle to witness. This is the handicap match set of this video. The first of which isn't technically a dinosaur, by the way, with the Quetzalcoatlus being named after the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl. Now look, being a massive winged pterosaur that would more than likely have scooped up a baby T-Rex when it wanted to, you can imagine, yeah, that could probably happen. But you can also imagine Imagine what it must have been like when they made the unfortunate mistake of trying to take a baby T-Rex uh, with some parents nearby, or just another T-Rex in general. Fun fact, even though this pterosaur was featured in Jurassic World Dominion, it wasn't really shown doing much with other species, while the cancelled Jurassic World Regenesis prequel actually did have the original 1993 T-Rex fight and kill a Quetzalcoatlus that landed in its territory. So suffice it to say, don't get too close to something like T-Rex because I really don't think it would have been much of a fight at all. Now certain small predators are also creatures that could take down a small T-Rex, but again, I want to stress that anything getting around those jaws during the Cretaceous is toast. If a little one gets attacked, don't expect Utah Raptor to stand much of a chance if an adult wants to have lunch. Even in a pack situation, I don't think it's working well for them. But anyways, that brings us to the main event. And except what has happened there, as it came back and now you all knew this was coming, and yeah, it's pretty awesome. The Triceratops. So no joke, when it comes to defending against T-Rex, this is the guy you want to talk about. With a set of massive horns and a frill on its face, the animal comes complete with swords and a shield. And yes, it would have been formidable for the Tyrannosaurus to like get into any sort of combat with it. Triceratops is one of the most popular dinosaurs of all time. It's a big beast of an animal, and it lived alongside T-Rex. So that means that there probably were situations where the Triceratops would have attacked and killed a T-Rex that was trying to attack and kill it. Now, I did a video a few years ago on the discovery that was made where two nearly complete skeletons of these dinosaurs were found in Montana. And look, they had the Triceratops and the T-Rex dying like right alongside each other after a fierce battle. The small T-Rex was pretty banged up, uh, its bones were broken, and it had some missing teeth that were found embedded in the trike's spine. <laughs> Military precedent, oh my! Sting looked like a human javelin! Triceratops obviously would have used those horns and that frill for defense and combat, and much like what some people believe the Anki used in interspecific combat, the weapons were still good to go up against carnivores like a T-Rex. It literally killed one in this instance, but also paid the ultimate price. Stig may have to submit right here. That being said, this is a duel that I think most people would love to see in a Jurassic Park movie. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet, and if not this, then the most accurate battle that the animal would have had to engage in during the Mesozoic era, which would have been T-Rex versus another T-Rex. Because these things were not only the most massive, overpowered beasts of their time, they were cannibals. Tyrannosaurus Rex is truly the king of the dinosaurs for a reason. This thing was just a beast, man. It was a tank. There was nothing really getting around it and I know it's been said many times in the past that it's just been extremely cliche and tropey to have this creature lose battles in the Jurassic Park sequels but it just takes one movie man it's really interesting to look back at the fossil record and even an animal like Alamosaurus and compare them to the T-Rex and what kind of lifestyles they would have been in uh, it's just cool talking about the ecosystems and real world evidence of Tyrannosaurus and dinosaurs in general and comparing them with Jurassic Park is very fun to me. But anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. What do you think? Which one of these animals had the best chance at actually killing a T-Rex? Alamosaurus has the size, Triceratops has the combat armor, and other animals could have probably stood a good chance. But make no mistake, they're not all winning 100% of the time. So whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. Wait a minute! No! 
Now before I go, I want to thank everyone that's helped me build my channel over the years. I'd also like to thank every one of you guys who've watched my stuff. You've all been extremely cool to me. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and hope that you'll consider subscribing. God bless you all. Christ is King. See you guys in the next video. And as always, take it easy.